I am so happy today to have Jalisa Prado of Rizzo's Curls, the founder and CEO of that amazing brand to join MCBI today to chat with us. Thank you, Jalisa, for being here and being a part of this editor's conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. Let me tell you, there is not a conversation out there that's talking about Latina business women um, where your name, your face, your presence is not attached. You have been everywhere just representing with such excellence, not just for women, but for Latinas in particular. And it is just so awesome to see such incredible representation and you giving so much of yourself back to others, especially budding entrepreneurs who um, are looking at you as a role model and an inspiration. So thank you for all that you do and for the impact that you have on so many and for joining us today, because I know you're a busy lady. So thank you for taking time to talk to me and, and the MCBI audience today. No, thank you. It's my pleasure. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, you know, in the U.S., there are so few beauty brands, especially hair care brands, that have their origins in Latino traditions. And with Rizzo's being one of them, what would you say is it is about your formulas, about your branding, about your messaging that is really relatable to consumers and helps your brand to really stand out? Yeah, I think something that um, is very tied to the Latino culture is the emphasis on like na on natural ingredients. So, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in a household where, you know, my 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 grandmother grew up in very, very rural Mexico. And so they didn't have doctors. They didn't have stores to go buy products. They didn't have any of this. Like, I think the nearest doctor in her town was at least three hours away. So, and then my grandma... Mm -hmm she was the closest thing to like a doctor that the town had. So, and a lot of her learnings were based on traditions, based on natural remedies. So um, it was for, for her growing up, it was no, more normal to make your own concoction, whether it was for your hair, for your skin, for your health, than to go buy something. Buying something was like a luxury they didn't have. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for a lot of, Latino communities, especially a lot of immigrant communities in general, um, they have this like deep rooted understanding and knowledge that has been passed down through generations um, that have, you know, that that are based on on natural remedies. And so that was something that was very normal in my own ho household. If my hands, my skin was really dry, my grandma would be like, go get this oil, go get this sugar, go get this lemon. We're going to make a, a hand scrub. Uh, my scalp, some, you know, was, was flaky. Go cut this aloe vera. We're going to scoop this, put this on your head. So um, it was always something that was very tied to not only, you know, my, my own self-care, but also like my culture, my identity. And I think that that's where the inspiration for the formulas, for the ingredients, for all of that comes from is, is, is that. And I think it's, it's something that a lot of, you know, not just the Latinos, but a lot of like immigrant communities can relate a lot to a lot of the ingredients that they find in the products. Yeah. It's, it's such authentic roots. Yeah. So when did Rizzo's actually make it to retail and what was that journey like? Yeah. So um, I launched in 2017 but I launched into retail, into large retail in 2020. Um, and it was a very crazy year because we launched into retail um, in February and the world shut down the next month. So that it was just incredible. It was just a very different time. Um, and I was just, you know, really lucky to have been able to um, place those orders, get that, you know, I'm sure you know how that works with like all the behind the scenes manufacturing that goes into mm -hmm. it prior to the pandemic really hitting. So yes. I really feel blessed to have been able to make the cut like literally a month prior. That's wow. I, that That's just insane that your launch was the year of the pandemic. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> not not even the month before the yeah, it was just a crazy wow. time. Wow. Well, let, let's talk about that a little bit more because of course 2020 rocked every brand's world. Um, you know, the best of the best um are still in recovery from 2020. So 2020 just about every brand, including yours, being a new brand in retail, had to somehow pivot. And then we went into 2021, which was a year of such uncertainty, we still didn't quite know how to um, turn things around and kind of get back to normal, if you will. Uh, but then 2022 presented more opportunity for post-pandemic recovery. So how did Rizzo's Curls finish out 2022? Yeah, I think I think we've been really blessed to the ti- timing is everything and and it's and it's just really interesting how um like in 2020 after the pandemic hit a lot of manufacturers had to increase their minimums um do you know I'm sure I'm sure you know um due to the fact that they had to a lot of them had to pivot to make emergency items or other items or there was just like shortages everywhere and there actually are still shortages yeah so exactly so it was honestly like divine timing that we launched into retail that year because because we were launching into retail our minimums we were able to make much higher minimum so had we not launched into retail the moment that we did we probably would not have been able to make the minimums that were now in place going forward. So with that, with with that said, I'm like so many things that, um, have happened. I feel just like it was very serendipitous that we are still in business and we're still able to even, you know, work with the manufacturers that we do and have product available because I feel like a lot of the effects from the pandemic to businesses within beauty happened behind the scenes and in the manufacturing side and the operation side, the supply chain side, um, because uh, for a lot of like beauty brands during the pandemic, there was still a demand for products because people were doing these things at home, but the supply chain behind the scenes was, you know, very tough and it is still tough. So for us, um, you know, 2022 has been a a really good year. And um, I think that we're, we're still feeling the effects behind the scenes, which I'm sure, you know, from shortages, et cetera, and operation side, but Um, As far as like the demand, I think customers have, a lot of customers have learned to um, not only care for their own hair at home, like almost become stylists because during the pandemic, you know, they they, they had to learn more about their own hair because they couldn't go out and get it done. Yes. And I think that, and I think that that brought along a lot of people that were straightening their hair. Um, still straightening their hair and weren't wearing it natural in any way to start learning how to care for it naturally. So I do think that like we had a new influx of customers um, after the pandemic that were for the first time, you know, wearing their hair natural and like, and, and even if it was like something as simple as someone that has like very wavy hair that would usually straighten it and their hair is just like a slight wave. Yeah. Um, even th- like they were the, like, they, I feel like that was the biggest customer that didn't even realize they could, they, they didn't have to straighten their hair. And so for us, it was a lot of educating and, um, and then a big learning curve for them. And I think that it, it's been helping us um, being able to provide that, that, that knowledge to them. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've noticed about your brand that is really impactful is that you are really concerned about educating your community about their hair. Um, so yeah. that was- Because the majority of our like, customers, it's so interesting be- and it still surprises me till this day because we're five years in and still the majority of our customers are not people that have already been wearing their hair curly and like already been in that segment, but they're like completely new to it. They're like, I've been flat ironing my hair my whole life, or I've been relaxing and I've been doing this. And I've not, I don't even know what, if my hair can still curl. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, 
that's so crazy because it, it, you just think, you know, after years of being in the business, you think like, oh, everyone's already. Everybody knows what their texture yeah. type is by now. <laughs> exactly. And no, it still don't. surprises me. They don't. Yeah. So with being in retail, um, you are in quite a number of doors right now and you have a number of retail partners. Is there one or more that has really um, kind of stepped up to be and proven to be a really good retail partner? Someone, a, a company that's helping you to promote and grow the brand and it's really been like, you know, a synergistic relationship with them. Yeah, well, I think for us, you know, the the retail partner that really took, you know, that risk with us and, um first launched us and took us in was Target. And I think that they've been just um, such a blessing to us. I think we've really, they, they've been able to really help us grow, really support us um, since the beginning when, you know, we were just uh, selling on our website. Um, and I think that especially for a retailer like that, there's a certain number of productivity that they expect. And it's like, it's, it's a business at the end of the day. So even just like one little position on that shelf is worth a lot of money. So really for them, ex exactly. Really I'm sure, you know, like yeah. how, how that goes, you know? So, um, so for them to take that risk of like this new brand, never been in retail, like we don't know it, it's a, it's a big risk. And so, um, they've not only, really supported, you know, the brand by taking us in, but also helping us grow. So we, I was a part of this, um, like national, um, commercial that they had a bunch of different brand founders in they've, you know, put Riso's curls on, on ads. Like I, I was in New York and I was walking and there was a huge, like billboard inside the mall with my face on oh, it. I was so like, cool. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Your mind, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, it was like such a shock, but um, I think that I'm, you know, that that's the OG partner that really um, changed our life, you know. Yeah, Target is a great retail partner for so many um, small entrepreneur brands. Um, did Target find you or did you go to Target? So um, it was kind of a combination because we met them at... Um, at the Cosm Cosmoprof trade show mm -hmm. yeah. um, in Vegas. So that's, you know, especially in, I think this was in 2017 when we first like made um, a connection. It was, we just had launched. Um, so that's where we first met them. And if, you know, for those that aren't familiar with the trade show, a lot of, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of buyers and retailers that go, but also a lot of businesses, um, a lot of brands that go like the, uh, a rate, like, a it's not like regular trade shows where just like a, cu a customer can go, no, you have to like have a business or be a, be representing a, a brand. So, um, so yeah, it was, I, we were really lucky to have had that connection there. Yeah. Cosmo Prop is a wonderful place to make connections. Um, I, it's funny. I count the years that I've been to Cosmoprof. I've been to the past 19 Cosmoprofs. No way. <laughs> and it is a wonder, it is a wonderful place. Oh to, my uh, gosh. To do you do, go to the one in Vegas? You know, for usually? Me to be. Yeah. Yeah. The Vegas one. Yeah. 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 And, and I had the opportunity to also go to the one in Bologna, in Bologna, Italy as well. Oh my God. Yeah, that, that sounds way better than the Vegas one. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm waiting to talk to you again and for you to tell me you've been to the one in, in Italy or in Brazil or some of the other places that they oh, are. Oh, I signed me up. Can, that sounds amazing. Consumers. Yeah. <laughs> now I understand that your company is self-funded. I've heard you uh, in some other interviews, mentioning that the company is self-funded and yeah. for a brand with the level of distribution that you have, that's really rare, you know? Yeah. Um, so is there anything that you can share with me and with our audience about what your growth strategy is? You know, yeah. right now, access to capital is a huge conversation starter. Everybody's talking about um, access to capital, especially for black and brown businesses. 
Yeah. Uh, is there any part of uh, your growth plan that you're going to be looking for investment or some other type of opportunity to help grow and expand the brand? Yeah. So um, I always mention that part because I'm sure, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know how hard it is to um, be self-funded or like to have to need how much money you need in every step of the way, like whether you're in retail, whether you're not, especially when you're in retail, it's yes. like people need, we need money to grow. So um, I think that that's something that we've been really strategic and very intentional with that. I'm, I'm even surprised myself that we've been able to make it this far without it. But I will say that that doesn't necessarily mean I don't have any um, capital, like access to capital. So I've, we've been really creative and finding other ways to get money without giving up equity, without having investors. So for example, you know, since the moment we started having sales, we went to the bit, we had, we built a really good relationship with our bank, got a line of credit, like any grants, there's a lot of grants out there for small businesses, especially, um, uh, you know, women owned or, or minority owned businesses, et cetera. Um, so I think there's like this, um, there's this association called the minority something associate or th there's like some different associations that you can be credited as like they 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 vet you and they do this whole interview yes. process to make sure that you're actually you know um, a woman or minority yes. etc and once you have that you can apply to so many different grants that even retailers have that a plethora of different big businesses um, have and um, we we've been able to to do that. So so just because I don't have investors, it doesn't mean I don't have access to money. Because and I think that's something that a lot of businesses, um, especially starting out, um, it's something that is not um, as we, we a lot of people don't know about. Is that there's other ways to get money, not yeah. just through investors. So even to this day, we have a line of credit um, at our bank that if we needed money tomorrow we can go and get it so that's been really helpful for us um because as you know um you know you can get an order in for a large retailer it costs it could it could cost half a million dollars to produce that order and you might not get paid for three months you know so um it's it's always you know a lot of um really being being intentional on understanding your cash flow, understanding what your costs are, what your costs are going forecasting your your costs and um just really balancing those numbers. So for us the way that we've been able to stay self-funded is being super 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 um just uh intentional with our costs. So just keeping our costs down as much as possible. I think that people are always really surprised on a lot of campaigns that we do and that we normally brands would spend $80,000 or something where we find creative ways to implement them in $3,000 budget or something super small, um, it, literally in every step of the way. And I think that that I credit to you know, I feel like growing up in predominantly a black and brown, low income neighborhoods, like that's what you learn. Like it isn't, it's almost like no one can stretch a dollar better than these kids from <laughs> these neighborhoods. And I think that that's something that I definitely learned from growing up, um, you know, wanting to look fly on the first day of school and only having $20 and, you know, making my $20 stretch. So um, using Kool-Aid yeah. to dye your hair instead of buying hair dye. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think we all have those anecdotes. Like when you've grown up in these communities, it's like you, everybody <laughs> has a story. So, yeah. Well, you brought up something that's very interesting. I was mentioning access to capital. And as you were talking, I was thinking too, it's not just a matter of uh, small businesses like yours needing access to capital, but it's really being financial literate. So once yeah. you have some, you know, a, a different level of financial literacy, you can better learn, you know, what's available to you without necessarily looking for the types of traditional investments. 
a hundred percent small businesses look for to grow. So that 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 was important. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think that was I read a statistic that was the number one reason why small businesses fail within the first, I think it was like five years, is because of um financials, like they didn't balance their their money correctly. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to see that Team Rissos is uh, stretching those dollars. And uh, it, it's great to know that a business like yours that is growing like yours can be self-funded and have access to money in some other ways. Yeah, now, I think, I think right now people. that's what I'm doing, but we'll see in the yes, future. We'll I don't see. know. We'll see. <laughs> when, when you're ready to go to Bologna and expand internationally, you might need, you know. A I might need more money then. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how, how big is uh, your team? What, what does your team look like? Um, so we have about, we're small but mighty. Our team's about 10 people. Mm -hmm. And we have um, a lot of freelancers that, for example, like our PR company is, you know, they're freelance or our product development team, they're freelance, et cetera. So um, we work with a lot of just like really talented um Free, uh, other companies that that help us a lot with the business. Okay. And just curious to know if there was a young up and coming beauty entrepreneur um, who wanted to rise to the level of success like you have, you know, what, what's the one thing you would probably tell them that you kind of wish someone had told you when you first got into the business? I think that, um, there's, I, I think that uh, stepping into that space can be intimidating, but there's so much knowledge that just by being you, like, you know, just by being the customer, understanding the customer, um, you know, and I think that there's also so many benefits to being small and starting small that the bigger you are, it, it's it's hard to do. So for example, like, uh, being able to connect with the customer, being able to stay on trend, being able to make changes quickly, implementing um, a lot of these like trends or changes, et cetera. Uh, there's nobody that can be that flexible as a small business. The bigger you are, the more processes, the harder it is to get anything done. And I think that um, there's so much power that comes with being small. And I think that um I would have loved to been able to own that power more and feel like it is power and uh, because there there's a lot of advantages. Okay, that's great great advice. Um we know that Rizos is taking care of your fabulous mane, but are there any other multicultural beauty brands outside of hair care like cosmetics or personal care or skincare? that you're using. O open up your vanity and your cosmetic bag and tell us which some of your favorites are. Um, so there's, um, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of Live Tinted. They're another yeah. Ulta brand yes. um, owned yes. by Deepika. Mm -hmm. um, I'm loving her lip. So I'm wearing her lip a lot right now. Nice. Um, the lip bar is also great. Melissa, she's an amazing entrepreneur. Um, there's there there's so many um yeah there's there's so many I've I've used a lot of the like use to the people stuff um I'm there's there's such a good number of I'm like I'm blinking but there's <laughs> <a bunch. laughs> well that's great the ones that you named are great and they're some of my favorites as well so listen, I want to say thank you so much again for carving out time to chat with me today and to um, give MCBI viewers an opportunity to get to know you and your brand and um, your boss moves a little better. Thank you so much, Jaleesa. You have been uh, great to talk to. And I hope that as Rizzo's Pearls continues to grow, that you will come back and share more with us and uh, allow us to, again, just kind of get to know you more, pick your brain a little bit more and uh, help us to learn more about what it takes for a successful brand like yours to, to just keep representing with so much excellence. So thank you thank again for you. being with us. I appreciate you talking with us. Thank you so much.